Never had you figured for a Doors fan. I'm not really a Doors fan, but sure, I like to get into them. You want to be a Doors fan? You can't just go buy any album. It's scientific. Sure. You got to buy this. Waiting for the sun. Listen to it every night around dusk for about a month. Then what? Who's playing bass? No one. No bass. No bass? That's right. But don't let that scare you, my friend. Let that liberate you. Because when you're free flying with the doors, man, what do you need a safety net for? TBTL. Good afternoon and welcome to Judgment City. You've just had quite a little journey, so for now, relax and enjoy the ride. Be honest. What is it about me that no one respects? Is it my hair? Yeah. I'm thinking about getting a new haircut, changing stuff up. Maybe getting like an Arnie Schwarzenegger jingle all the way type of haircut. You know, short, tall, and stiff. These people are lost and on drugs, and they have venereal diseases. That's not for you. You don't know them. In 1971, Bill Gates invented Microsoft. Wouldn't it be cool if I could remember my dingus password for my email? Well, all right, hello, good morning, and welcome everyone to a Thursday edition of TBTL, the show that just might be too beautiful to live. Come on, brain, think of things. Come on, brain, be so smart. My name is Luke Burbank. I am your host. You know, with my fecal list in jail, I can eat whatever I want today. Coming to you from San Francisco, California, where it is extremely cloud foggy. Cloud today. fog. And the rumors are true. You know, we've been going around on this uh, on the show. The least interesting original observation about the weather in San Francisco, which is, of course, the uh, coldest winter I ever spent was a summer in San Francisco. But boy, was that true yesterday when I was walking home from the um, San Francisco Museum of Modern Art where we had been filming. And the cloud fog had moved in. It was windy. And it felt like it was about 45 flipping degrees. But here's the thing. I wasn't even worried about the weather because something else had happened to me yesterday here in San Francisco that was so profound, so exciting. I've been waiting for this moment for months and it's finally here. It really, honestly, sort of caused me to think about futurism in a different way. Um, that was a, the most, I'm in San Francisco so I feel like I can make those kinds of tech bro statements that I'm really rethinking futurism. Uh, but anyway, I'll tell you what happened with that. And then um, I came down a little bit off of the high of my first experience when I went to a restaurant and felt mm, a fair amount of anxiety. It's a restaurant within a restaurant. Uh, so we will talk about that and so much more here on episode 4,267 in a collector series. Let the fun begin. Um, we, have a, uh, we have an article from Rob Sheffield in Rolling Stone saying that America's hottest band... Is Credence Clearwater Revival? And when he said that, that shocked me. Uh, we will make the case for a CCR and why they are having such a moment, or why we're trying to figure out why they're having such a moment on this Thursday, also known as a Blur's Day, so we'll it's my birthday today. do the Blur's Day messages, and we're going to talk to this guy, longest-running Cobro of the show, maybe best known for his depictions of the tall ships. Speaking of rock legends, he's, of course, the soulful rocker from New Hampshire. He's Andrew Walsh, and he's joining me right now. Good morning, my friend. You almost went full shingy there, didn't you, with your futurism? <laughs> I did. Digital. I'm using a headset microphone. Yes, you're popping your peas just a little bit, not just enough to let us know that it's a live talk. I planted my flag on that topic, by the way, or I drew a line in the sand. Um, I'm going to be in Nashville next week. I'm going to be helping out with this big kind of corporate uh, get-together. And I was going over things with the folks that are putting it together, and I was going to have a shingy. I think the plan was for me to have a shingy style mic, and I, I asked with great, uh, very delicately, because they're paying me to do this. They're being very nice, so I don't want to be a hassle. But I said, could I just have a handheld microphone, please? And literally, it was like I don't want to look like I'm doing a TED talk. Oh, the, the that's what you said, but that's not the full story, though. It's not about how you. I mean. Maybe it is partially for you how you look, but also it is about about mic usage as somebody who uses a yes. microphone every day, right? Like, yes, I. you're right. If I were on stage, well, I'd be embarrassed for a lot of reasons, um, but uh, I wouldn't I would feel uncomfortable visually with that with that weird little microphone. But also, like you do a lot of 
moving away from the microphone and mm-hmm. moving into the microphone. And you yes. know, most people don't know how to use microphones, which is why they have to use those, and that's fine. But like, you don't want to. You, you need to clear your throat from time to time. If you're me, you need to blow your nose from time to time. You you need mm-hmm. to get away from that thing. Yes, that was the way that I pitched it to them. Was as a professional, I know exactly where that microphone should be in proximity to my mouth. But mostly it was because I didn't. I, my rider said I either get two coffee cups or I get a handheld microphone because hmm. I got to do something with my hands. That's true, I literally true, would yeah. not know what to do with my hands if they were both free because the microphone was was uh, you know right near my mouth. Or have you seen the one they do on Broadway sometimes where they put it in the middle of your forehead like it's flesh colored oh, no, and they haven't. will just put it in the middle of your forehead? I think the theory is. It picks up the audio well, but you know, if they put it on your cheek, you know, you're either you might scratch your cheek or you just your cheek moves a lot when you're singing. Your forehead doesn't really move in the same way. And so I've seen a few productions where the person has a flesh colored teardrop lavalier microphone coming down from their widow's peak, and I just think we've given too much power to the sound guys. <laughs> I am I don't not care that they're in the that. union. I don't care that they're grumpy. I don't care that we're all afraid of them. And we are. We're all afraid of them. Don't let them put the microphone on my widow's peak, please. Yeah, that that makes me deeply uncomfortable. But I'm the type of person who doesn't like, um, I don't even like stickers on me. Like one of mm-hmm. the one of the, the greatest showings of respect. Lies the devil ever, the devil ever told. Was that he didn't exist. Mm-hmm. Um I, there is a, uh, a one of the a, greatest lies Raphael Dever ever told was that the Mariners were going to be able to beat the Detroit Tigers. <sighs> why? Why are you bringing Devers into this? Because I said Dever instead of Devil. Oh, 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 oh! I, I thought miss, I was missing I miss something. Spoke. There. I turned no. off the game yesterday, by the way. For I was just like, you know what? I, I'm just going to turn this off, and I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch something Mark. more relaxing uh, with Genevieve, a show called The Boys that has <laughs> so that that just freaks you very, out. Very, very dark programming. Just incredibly right? dark when it comes to just graphic violence combined with um, you know stories of of of, of the coming fashion fascists it's a parallel story of what's going on in america in a in a, in a, in a extreme trump-esque world and i was like you know what that seems like a better thing to relax to than mm-hmm. the mariners tigers game um so anyway uh i was gonna say i i don't like stickers I, you know I, there was a child uh in my life for a while it was not my child it was a neighbor's kid that who sounds... had babysit for a while we <laughs> really? played okay we played poker. thank you for clarifying we played poker um i sold her cigarettes uh it was there a, was pretty a child good deal. in my life for a while well you know because i don't have a kid but never uh, used yeah, right. Uh, but I remember running into her and her mom at the grocery store. I was like, hey, how you doing? And she had just gotten a pack of stickers. And you know what? I don't even think it was a new sticker. I think she pulled an old sticker maybe off of her hand or something and stuck it onto my Aww, hand. Cute. And I was just like, oh, thank you, sweetie. Thank you so much. And then I just ran to the frozen food <sighs> section and pulled that off. Like, I do not like stickers on my hands at all. So the idea of a sticker microphone being smack dab in the middle of my forehead head makes me uncomfortable well i luckily um, prevailed in this conversation I, w- I wouldn't even call it an argument because nobody was arguing they were being very nice and they said yeah we can get you a handheld microphone and the relief that washed over me was intense because again more even than the wanting to have control in the proximity it's uh it's just the fact that i don't want to have two hands unencumbered when i'm standing on stage because i do not know what to do with them the other thing and i'm sure this has come up before when the topic of microphone technique has uh, been a topic. But the greatest lie the Raphael Dever ever told was that those lectern microphones are a good flipping idea. They are they are a solution to a problem made by a person who's never stood on a stage and tried to give a presentation. You know what I'm talking about? Well, I sort of know what you're talking about, and I and I don't want to stop your flow, and I certainly don't want to argue. No, I mean, I'm flowing, and the listeners but, can tell, um, so don't stop yeah. it. I don't want to <laughs> stop. Hold on, I'm getting my, my room service coffee, <laughs> I please. I trying to be as less flow as possible, or as least flow as possible. I um, Here's the thing, though, that I think we need to acknowledge going into any conversation without sounding snobby about it, and I'm not even putting myself at... at, at 
you, you know, or pretending that I'm at your experience level on stage Thank with you. microphones. But like respect when you're talking about a lectern microphone, ninety nine point nine percent of the time that is for people who don't use microphones. Like I mean that that is the yeah, sound but- person's like whether you're talking about somebody in a at a lectern in a you know in K- is it Kane Hall in <laughs> on the UW nice campus. Thank you, or in a church, or or if you're talking about somebody giving you know like some sort of a TED talk, but they don't you know their, their background is an audio. Like I think the challenge of the audio people is always trying to meet people where they are. Right? Yes, that's fair. That's a that's a fair point. And as somebody who is on stage a lot, interviewing people, and then looking across and seeing the befuddlement in our audio folks' eyes as the person continues to not get close to the microphone, mm-hmm. that is a that is a pickle. The thing about the lectern microphone that is a problem is it is supposed to be this thing that sort of catches everyone's voice and then they don't have to think about it. But what most people do is they lean into the microphone, this little wand microphone. And so, first of all, they're stooped over in an awkward in an awkward fashion. And it's too loud. And then the person is turning it down and then it's too quiet. And again, I guess it's not, I know I'm trying, I'm not trying to put this on the sound people. And we have some audio people. We have some sound Americans who listen to the show and I don't want to disrespect their duplication, but I just, that thing has never, ever worked. I, I, the, I guess the way it's supposed to work is you're supposed to stand, you know, bolt upright, read your script or say whatever you're going to say and don't get in any way closer to the microphone because it is supposed to be able to pick up your voice where you are. As you said, it's supposed to meet you where you're at. But most people I think don't do that. They lean down into it and then the whole thing falls apart. And it, it gives you that awkward body language as well, right? Yes. I don't know. I'm trying. Yes. It's driving me bananas. I shouldn't even bring this up. It's driving me bananas that I can't think of specifically what bit it is, but I can totally. I, I feel like David Cross addresses this subtly really? in more than one in more than one sketch, or at least one where he he just does. I feel like he does such a good job in Mr. Show, maybe other things as well, but in Mr. Show of being the guy who doesn't know how to use the microphone. Like either he's like he's all on it and it's popping all over the place and like leaning over into the lectern like that. You know that and the sound. I would watch you doing your version of David Cross. I'm loving this character. It is a specific sound. I know I've said this on the show a million times and people listened and and remember to every every word I say, but um I, I think they do a really good job of it less comedically but very um i think astutely like sonically and sonically in the movie magnolia where you have tom cruise playing that really toxic guy who mm-hmm. may tj or, mackey yeah, tj mackey exactly and he's on stage and he's giving his like his toxic ted talk to the men of the audience <laughs> about how they can how they can <laughs> score with the ladies or whatever only it's very it's very gross the language that he uses and uh and he is wearing one of those headset mics and they and like the you know the sound people on the that movie really capture that that it's way too close to his mouth and it's popping the peas and it's like you can hear everything but it's just slightly distorted i love that they do that that's so great Mm -hmm. great sound design on that definitely Um, by the way the guy that i am convinced is the uh, the sort of um real life basis for that tj mackey character Tom Likas has officially retired. So, oh really? Good news, oh, America. No. We outlasted Tom Likas. Well, there's still archives, though, right? I can still get my. Not, I can still not get my really, fill. because um, <laughs> when when the news came out, uh, our friend Camaro Kev sent me and our buddy JD uh, the the uh, little article in some local paper that Likas was hanging it up. And I said, was he still doing it? And and Kevin said, I don't think the website has worked for like a couple of years. <laughs> the new right. normal, yeah, which was the name right. of his audio website, was didn't seem to have any kind of streaming content or the archives. It was pretty kludgy as it was. And I have to be honest with you. I was kind of annoyed by the tone of the article because it made it it really made it seem that Tom Likas had rejected broadcast media versus the real case, which is People, good-hearted people of America had finally essentially rejected Tom Likas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it's like, he, you know, after however many years he's hanging up and his quote was something, you know, typically self-aggrandizing, like, when it stops being fun, I don't want to do it anymore, and I or I just was ready to do other things. And I was like, dude, nobody was going to your kludgy-ass, yeah. misogynist, 
website. And and that's why you stopped doing it. Don't pretend like this was working and you stepped away from it. It was not working. There was a generation of, and like just even putting the, the, the toxicity and grossness of, of him aside, there was a generation of radio, like almost like what people would describe as legendary broadcasters, you know, national names in radio, which, you know, there are only a handful of those. Um, Walsh, Burbank. Wal- in in that... In Sklaroff that now. <laughs> exactly. It's the Mount Rushmore of broadcast. <laughs> That's right. Fletcher uh, uh-huh. is P. the fourth. Fletch. Exactly. Um, but uh, anyway, um, you know, there was that era of sort of aging broadcasters who'd really hit the high watermark in their broadcast careers, but then we're trying to segue into um, whatever the digital future was. But it was before. Chingy and I thank you for <laughs> using the proper term. I got, I, and you know that I'm actually, once again, evoking David Cross there. He In like the, right. in the revamped season of Mr. Show, which I think was just called With Bob and Dave or something. It was like season mm-hmm. four that came out decades later. He does an imitation of Shingy, that futuristy guy, that Silicon <laughs> Valley well, actually, he's an Australian guy, right? Anyway, and he does Maybe, an yeah. imitation of him. He keeps on saying digital. That's basically all his <laughs> imitation is, is he'll just say the future, digital. The past, digital. Trains, See, that's another David Cross digital. impression that I love to hear you do. <laughs> it helps that you probably haven't heard the original, so you don't know how terribly I'm butchering it. But um, anyway... I don't remember what I was saying other than they kind of they they thought that they were making the leap from like I want to mm-hmm. sort of I, I want to maybe step down my career a little bit. I don't want to be going into the to the radio studio at 3 30 4 a.m. every mm-hmm. day to do my morning show or whatever and all the work that goes into it. Numbers are sliding the future digital but podcasting mm-hmm. hadn't exploded yet so they created websites and they said well you know my my buddy Tom Likas put up a website with like a paywall and like mm-hmm. he's got such an addictive audience that people are going there and paying him you know like five dollars a month and he's raking it in or fifteen dollars a month I, I have no idea what that model was and you just sort of saw a lot of people doing that uh, um, and it was just sort of like I feel I don't feel bad for them like they're fine but it, it's definitely like sort of a an in between generation I feel like that kind of missed right. that that thir- that step in between and we are almost too old for it but we got so lucky mm-hmm. that a guy named James Botdorf yeah. worked at Bonneville Media which owned Cairo Radio and when you know when some people were sort of realizing that this digital thing was going to be important this dude who was just you know the the uh the web guy at the time i think he's like running the organization now but the web guy at cairo just was so good about making sure that all of our files played when you went to the cairo website and went to the tbtl page and clicked on it and that small thing was so huge for us because at the time most links most mp3 links on websites that were mm. that you know, promised to play you some audio were just dead links because somebody didn't. And by the way, also Sean DeTori, Japan's number one mixer at about 945, I would look over at his computer, 945 PM, and he would be in the process of like encoding mm-hmm. and uploading all three hours of TBTL. And he did that every single night d- diligently. And because of that, we somehow luckily got you know, in the habit pattern of enough people that this is a thing. But we are almost, I mean, we are so close to being those guys who worked in radio and then heard about this this kind of like podcasting thing and then started a website. And if you go to it now, it's just a graveyard of like three attempts. Uh, of real player, of, of dead real player. <laughs> <laughs> what a specific <laughs> and perfect doesn't reference. Doesn't it give you like just, real player? Doesn't thinking of real player just give you like kind of a bad, <laughs> empty feeling in your soul? Yeah, because you never clicked on real player and had no. a good sort of experience. And it was, it was like, do you always want to download dead. this RN file? And you're like, I guess. And then you download it and it's like, but I'm still just a pointer file that needs something on the... You're like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Here, this is going to be a bad idea. I'll tell you what, I always quote Listen, this... Listen, you have a free pass for the rest of the show after your <laughs> real player reference, sir. Um, this is a bad... I, I don't... I always quote this digital uh, with Bob and David sketch. I don't even think it's that great, honestly. It just stuck in my craw. But it's mm-hmm. only like a minute and a half long. It begins with Bob introducing David's shingy character. It says keynote mm-hmm. speaker. They're in a very okay. cheap sort of looking stage that would be, you know, uh, again, the type of stage one would present in Silicon Valley. How does he do it? 
Well, we're going to find out tonight. Here he is, IOL's digital soothsayer, Shangy. Shangy is his name. <laughs> IOL. Digital. So he's coming up digital. through the crowd saying digital in people's faces. He's got big black hair pointing up. Does he have glasses. a ponytail? No ponytail, but like kind of oh. wild, like he's the guard. I think the guitar. real Shingy has a ponytail, which I feel like is part of the problem. The, this is hair that is, it's like huge hairband sort of hair. It's like jet black sticking mm. up and like long and back. Ivory tower, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Here we are, yes? <laughs> all of us together in the here, in the now, yeah? It's all about <laughs> digital, yeah? The web allows us to be everywhere with our eyes, right? Hey, rocket. He's showing us slides future, of things like a rocket ship. The past. Noise. <laughs> Communication, yeah? Through sound waves, right? Wave bye-bye, gone. Digital, right? <laughs> Nature. Right? Renewal. Recycle. It's a life cycle, man. It's digital, right? Time. Melting. Tempest fugit. In flight. Gone forever. Shoot it down. We missed it. Digital. <laughs> right? White man. Black face. Facing reality. Reality. Evolving. Digital, yeah? Micro organisms right micro is macro small is big up is down i'm a clown digital <laughs> i don't know I don't at know. what point is he channeling ringo star <laughs> right i think the person who uploaded it was like we get enough of this and the sketch just ends in the middle but that's fine i want to apologize to too um mm -hmm. for uh misdescribing david shing's hair aka shingy uh he does not have a ponytail he has probably the hair that david cross has oh in yeah it. I, yeah that's i just sort of it, he seemed culturally to have a ponytail to me, based on I my memory of things. I wondered about that when you said that. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that David Cross is wearing very specific shingy hair. Yeah, yeah that is yeah, what yeah. he's got. He just there. has a wild uh, mane of hair. And, uh, you know, it's probably a nice enough guy, but um, that's a... Digital. <laughs> that's a devastating send-up. Future. Digital. Dig digital. Yeah, I mean... I sh Sure, I'm sure he's a nice. I mean, I, I don't even know that I'm sure that he's a nice person. But Andrew, you know, is, I'm in the belly of Silicon oh, Valley. That's right. You got to be careful. Out that you I'm say besmirching Shingy. They won't let me out. Actually, that's they won't a really let good me point. In, they won't let me in a Waymo again, Andrew. Yeah, yeah, let's get into that. We're 20 minutes in. I didn't even want to get into any of this bullshit today. I just want to hear about your self-driving car. Dude, we thing. got a real player reference within the first 20 <laughs> minutes of the show? Hell yes. <laughs> All right, let's hear about your experience there in Silicon okay, Valley. Okay, I went in a driverless car yesterday, and it was incredible like i i was a it was a it, it was an intense experience in my life that had me this is how we ended up on shingy i guess had me rethinking i don't know maybe not rethinking but just feeling like holy shit the future is kind of here you know the the joke is like we were promised jetpacks and all that like it felt like i got a jetpack yesterday I was, we were filming down in the um, San Francisco Bay under the Golden Gate Bridge. By the way, that's a whole other thing, which was we went out, me and the um, crew from CBS, we went out on this boat to um, basically film this um, funeral director named Ruben and his assistant Johnny to film them dispersing the um, cremated remains of people who have passed away in San Francisco and didn't have any next of kin. So they are identified. We we know who they are, but there was nobody that would come and claim their remains. And so what the city of San Francisco does, which I think is actually pretty awesome, is they go out to the harbor and they they, you know, disperse the um the remains or they're technically called cremains, which is kind of weird, um out in the harbor. So that's what we were doing. But on the way back, I I needed to get a car to to uh, you know, bring me back to the hotel. And I had seen a couple of these Waymos driving around, and I was under the impression that these things still needed to have a human being sitting at the steering wheel. I did not comprehend that San Francisco is full of what appears to be hundreds of fully driverless cars. And so I like downloaded the, the app for this thing, and it was exactly like signing up for any kind of ride share. It took like one minute. And then I hit come pick me up. And then two minutes later, a driverless car freaking pulled up with my name, by the way. Well, my initials LB on this digi digital screen digital. on top of it. 
and I got into the car and it drove me back to the hotel. And it was, I mean, it was mind blowing. You know, I think I did have a better beat on that than you because I've just seen a lot of people posting things online yeah. of, of getting self-driving cars. I forgot that it's specifically Waymo, though, because I was going to my first question for you was like, did you know you were getting a self-driving car? Like, could, yes. did you just call an Uber or a Lyft and one of them pulls up? But now that you say that, of course, I remember Waymo because people were messing around with those Waymo cars. Yeah, so like you, um, did you, what was the uh, coning them or something? Right. From, like, traffic cones over their sensor. Yeah, I sort of learned that on the show because people were posting um, videos of that, and I didn't understand what was going on. And then people had kind of fact-checked that and said, yeah, if you put a, a, a traffic cone on it, it just confuses the hell out of these cars. But um, Which sounds like taking a dangerous situation and making it more dangerous, but I guess it's a way of like sort of striking back at technology that you don't approve of. But um, uh, here, here's my question for you. Um, you. You chose Waymo specifically because you wanted this experience, or because mm -hmm. where you were, it made the most sense? Because I wanted the experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, San Francisco is full, full of lifts and Ubers, so mm -hmm. that's never an issue getting one. Mm -hmm. But I had seen a couple driving around, and I was, I was sort of intrigued. Um, and because I'm with you that I, I did see people posting I'm in a driverless car, but I somehow thought that they were just like influencers who were like allowed to have some sort of act. I didn't realize that just any old person, any old podcaster like myself, mm -hmm. could just like walk out on the street hit a button on their phone and a freaking robot car will just come get you. And then you get in and then you, it just drives you where you're going. And like I, it really was, I mean, you can watch the Hey Dummies video this week in the newsletter, which is me basically just freaking out in this car while listening to Post Malone, because they also give you a lot of great radio options. Wait, how and, do you uh, operate that through the app? It's just like wire. No, there's a, app? there's like a touch, like a, you know, like a tablet oh. kind of screen oh, where okay. you're sitting as the passenger. And, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's super integrated. Everything is, um, but, um, I don't know why I went Yoda on it there. Super integrated. It mm -hmm. is everything. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah, for, for some reason, this, this moment of, of just being in a car that did not have a human driver made me feel like we have technology can maybe actually do some shit that we need <laughs> going forward. Like, I feel like sometimes, you know, the promise of technology does not always pay off, but I just had this genuine moment yesterday of thinking, okay, we might be able to solve a lot of issues through uh, not to go not to go full shingy on it but like i i i felt very very excited about human potential because this thing happened where a driverless car took me 1.4 miles to my hotel okay i just want to let you know that um i have decided that at some point later on in the show and i don't know when and i might even do it without telling you I am going to play something called Niche is the New Mass uh, with David Shingy Shing, which uh, seemed okay. to be a, uh, a, a video. That actually that... sounds like a TED Talk I would give. Yeah, no joke. I've, like, I've definitely... You know, narrow casting versus broadcasting. Um, I feel we're going to play him and it's going to be eerily, it's going to be a better executed version of the kind of thing that I'm often saying to people. It looks, which is going to kill me. It looks like it's going to be uh, an interview style format. I just want to see how close the David Cross thing comes. But anyway, um, but okay, so you really you went from the micro to mm -hmm. the shingy like almost immediately. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, so I called this car and it pulled up and I have my initials. And now the you know what does this say about the future? But like we've skipped over so much of the human experience here. Tell me about the feeling of sitting. So you open the door, you sit in the back seat, and you mm -hmm. and you have this moment where the car is now about to start driving. And I have a very specific question for you that I think I am going to be disappointed in the answer to. Did you immediately feel the need to go to the bathroom? Because I feel like I would have that <laughs> sensation of suddenly it was I realized, sponsored by Barnes and Noble. I do feel like I would suddenly have that feeling of just kind of like, oh, everybody just left and I'm here alone. Oh, I got to go to the bathroom. No, but I will tell you this. It was driving faster than I expected. Okay. I was thinking, oh, the only way this can operate in a major U.S. city is if this thing just goes like at a golf cart speed mm -hmm. and is crazy cautious. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. Like I got in I shut the door. It started driving. It didn't make. I thought it was gonna. I thought literally I was gonna have to put the seatbelt on before it would even start yeah, moving. Like I just too. thought it would have all of this like of crazy, super safe stuff built in. No, a voice just says. Even though this car is automated, it's still. I'm paraphrasing here, but it was basically like, even though this car is you know automated, it's still driving on the streets, and you need to be safe. So put your seatbelt on. But it was driving when it told me this. It was admonishing me in the way that maybe a driver would. It wasn't like we can't move forward until 
you've put the seatbelt on, sir. And from have you there, had, it was have you just... ever had a driver do that to you before? I have drivers do that to me, and it like mm-hmm. real it really irritates me. I feel so infantilized, and it really pisses me off. When I, it's not like I'm like, hey, just drive. Like I'm just looking hmm. for the seatbelt. Like often, maybe not often, but. It's not uncommon to get in the back seat of a of a rideshare service like that, and like the seatbelt is like maybe jammed back in the yeah. cushions or something. You're working underneath at. some Lilo and Stitch blanket situation, right? Exactly, some kind you're, of seat cover. You're trying to pull it out, or or there have been times where maybe I'm like going to like a, a you know a party where we're bringing a dish or something, and Veeves and I are sort of getting situation situated, and the person I kind of don't realize that we're not moving, and the person will say, "Sir, I cannot drive until you put your seatbelt on." I just want to be like, you know what? I'm going to put my god damn seatbelt on i don't need to be Hmm. i don't need to be shamed by you it's funny because for the longest time in the words of billy joel um whenever i was in a taxi cab or a ride share i actively didn't wear the seatbelt as if i was protected in that vehicle Hmm. by some sort of magical bubble that meant no one could ever crash into this car Mm -hmm. like I'm talking decades of my life. It was like, well, why would you ever wear a seatbelt in a taxi cab? Like, what? That's, that's lunacy. And then one day I thought, you know, physics still applies. I'm not siding, by the way, with the overly brusque rideshare person who's making you put the seatbelt on. Um, that would also annoy the heck out of me. But it's just funny how forever I just thought, like, why would you even wear a seatbelt when you're riding in a taxi cab or a rideshare? And then one day I was like, because a crash could still happen. Again, I'm not siding with them. I'm just saying this was my personal journey. I think that's a generational thing because I, I think I was probably the same way for a while as well. And I think it's because did we used to buckle up in taxi cabs? I don't think we did. I don't think they even had seatbelts in taxi cabs. <laughs> I think they did. But like, I, I do remember thinking like, it's weird that we don't have like um, seatbelts on buses, you know, like Right, uh, but, but I mean, I guess if you get into an accident with a bus, like the the physics is just different, right? Like something really bad has to happen for you to maybe need a seatbelt. And that I don't, you know what? I don't want to think about that. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to think about what I. Do you know to think about the E line having <laughs> that kind of trouble? No, exactly. But uh, so I okay. I so it was driving that, faster than I thought it yeah, would, yeah. and it was. It it did this weird thing. This is all in the video, by the way. So I'm not trying to cannibalize the hey dummies, but there was this moment where. We were, I think it wanted to turn right, but there was a pedestrian in the crosswalk. And so instead of waiting for the pedestrian, it went an entire additional block and then like did a right to go back to where it had been trying to go. And I think that was like some sort of AI calculation that, I don't know if it's AI or not, but like some sort of like high level math calculation that was basically saying, and this is the kind of thing a human would never do. We would just wait for the person to cross the street. But this robot car knew that going an additional short block and then taking a right was going to actually be faster than waiting for the person, Mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. And then when we came around this corner as we were executing this, there was a UPS truck parked right in the road, like happens. And there was more people crossing the street. And I thought we were either going to hit the people or the UPS truck. We hit none of them. And it just cruised along and and went around the truck and... it was, I have had human, like, Lyft and Uber drivers who drive more slowly than this Waymo car did, which I was kind of surprised by. Mm-hmm. Oh, do you know, one thing I just wanted to say before, because I know I'm going to get emails from people, I bet... We don't hear from that many listeners who talk about their experiences of driving ride shares, which I'm kind of surprised about. You'd think we'd have more listeners who do that since you're in your car a lot and we obviously... I think it's the really um, customers who ask them to turn TBTL off. That is commonly. probably true. That is true. <laughs> anyway, I was going to say, I'll, I'm, I'm sure when somebody is sort of chastising me a little bit and saying, sir, put your seatbelt on, I'll bet you a million bucks it's a policy. You know what I mean? I'll bet you these people are just following the rules that they've been given from the, the company, which all the more makes me surprised that these cars at Waymo will even go. I would think for sure there would be a chip in that seatbelt that would say, OK, this car doesn't drive until uh, not to relitigate that. But I, I'm pretty yeah, shocked by that. I'm, I know. I I was I was expecting it to be kind of annoyingly like hospital corners Mm -hmm. and it was pretty chill. It might have been drinking. I don't know. Yeah, that's probably too chill for probably a lot of the residents of that area. Like, I well, hear okay, a that's lot the other part of the story about that, but I it seems like they've sort of if, if if these cars have taken over such a huge percentage of the driving population, I'm kind of actually surprised we haven't heard either more horror stories or more um, just sort of complaints. Well, that's okay. So that's the the other part of this was in the morning we were filming out on the water, 
And then I came back to the hotel. I did a little bit of work. And then I went over to, we're doing two stories while we're down here. The other one is about the uh, Museum of Modern Art San Francisco acquiring a big collection of art created by people with uh, developmental disabilities um, and or physical disabilities. And by the way, if you live in San Francisco, go to this exhibition. It's amazing. It's called The House That Art Built, and the stuff is totally incredible. We're going to go out to um, the, uh, the, the studio where a lot of these artists work um, out in Oakland on Friday. But point being... I show, at S- I show up at SF MoMA for our kind of afternoon shoot, and I am so psyched about this Waymo experience, and I just can't tell enough people about it. And every person who works at SF MoMA mm. universally hates Waymo. Mm-hmm. And what I are couldn't they quite, yeah. just kind of that sort of like, oh, really? Oh, all right, well, <laughs> I'm glad it worked out for you. I mean, just this kind of knee-jerk negativity about it, which, you know, I guess they come by, honestly, they live here, I don't. But I was trying to understand, I mean, I guess one argument could be like loss of jobs. It seemed to be that more, you know, San Franciscans do not want more cars on the road here because, and that's a reasonable issue or a reasonable point, you know, more cars is typically bad for a city. But it, it just was weird that I was so excited about it and everyone who lives here was like, basically, we don't like those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I know that, and, and that that's what sort of led to the people putting the coning it cones on the cars to confuse them and sort of like kind of in some way like sort of fight back against this this trend but and i you know so like i kind of have an awareness that is generally like frowned upon by people in you know who live there and so i didn't mean to like kind of be ignorant to that i hear that but as a national i was very story, ignorant to it by less, the way oh really oh yeah well yeah you i walked into in sf moma like yeah. you guys i come with great news but then <laughs> but then what do they say though <laughs> is it just like the idea of it is it because they're driving and parking in ways that are that are irritating them or getting that's in their the thing way? nobody gave me a specific argument for why they don't like it they just it's like so many things in politics Mm -hmm. they couldn't really specify a specific reason why they don't like it they just kind of didn't dig it Mm -hmm. was what i was getting from people and that's probably a larger conversation about just like city life right you know like it's just been categorized as like one of those annoying things that's happening that you know again maybe because they don't have these in um longview washington yet i was just like a you know, I was Jack McBrayer just like falling off the cookie jar truck. Just yeah, right. <laughs> super excited about this. But but yeah, nobody could give me a specific example of why they don't. Now, I know there have been a few issues, you know, where sometimes they stop for no reason. And like you said, that the coning thing was going on. All that was more, I think, human intervention. But I don't know if they were all electric, which I don't I think they they might be electric. I'm not actually sure. But it seems to me like if they're electric and they're not dangerous for people it seems like a good thing to me in a city in a place like to just to just eliminate but again i mean this is also a job that people have so maybe this is an automation of something that would displace a lot of people that are working that was not by the way the case that was made to me yesterday by anyone who was sort of not into it it wasn't like well the jobs um it just seemed like people just generally who live here kind of were like a little down on the idea well i mean and I'm not just trying to bend over backwards to be an annoying liberal. <laughs> I woke up this way. Uh, that's not even what they say. <laughs> that's even what, what did they used to say? I woke up like this. Um, but, uh, I mean, I could see broad societal arguments for it as somebody who has not read up a lot about the, the, the conversation or even controversy, if you will. But, like, generally speaking, like, as somebody who loves public transportation and would love if cities are going to have to, like, kind of change their infrastructure at all or even, like, kind of consider certain, you know, design elements based on transportation, I would prefer it to be like some sort of mass transit. So, you know, the, the more energy a car is money, still a car. Yeah, a car is still like it's still transporting one to three people, you know, individually or whatever. But like I'm, I'm not trying to get bent out of shape about this, but I, I could see that as an argument, certainly, especially as I know. I mean, I, I, I have not spent, you know, hardly any time in San Francisco, but I, I know that they have a decent public transportation system, but also people complain about the BART a lot, right? Like about it. It's really liability is that still a thing is that a, is that a common thing that you hear when you're down there there's all oh, the bart's broken again well this is the thing i'm such a little little lord fauntleroy when i'm in san francisco i'm always staying right in the middle of the city um because that's typically where we're filming and i don't take the bart and i'm not usually like i'm not going out to fruitvale station or whatever like i'm just not interacting with 
that side of real life in the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm a bad person to ask about that. Yeah. Oh, you know who's going to be on the show in a couple of weeks, by the way? Our friend Cassie, who who lives this on a daily basis. Speaking of basis. Oaklanders. Exactly. And I think might have some insight on the BART. So uh, stay tuned for that. So you stole Cassie Chatelaine. Mm-hmm. Stole. Wow. Stole. You and I are both uh, taking some vacation time coming wow. up. And so uh, there's going to be some wow. weeks where we're doing some special programming. By the way, some really, some really fun uh, special programming involving listeners singing their songs to their pets. Oh, man. Uh, we've already recorded some of those shows. That was turned legit out to be such good great. programming. Thanks in no part to us, but... Thanks to the listeners. Amazing. But yeah, we're both going to be recording some shows with guests as well. And I didn't, I mean, you could have, did you reach out to, did you reach out to Cassie? And, no. And she didn't chose occur to me. me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make sure no. that we understand what the I'm jealous, though. That was a very is. good thought. Cassie our can friend come Cassie on with you as radio, well. Cassie, radio can, gold. Cassie can be on the show every goddamn day as far as I'm trying to book I'm Shingy. <laughs> hey, can okay, you play good. us? Can, Perfect. After all Perfect. of this buildup, can you play us a little Shingy? Thank you, my buddy. Let's take it. So I have no idea what I'm dipping into. This is like a three minute video. Shingy, a, a, a shingy that looks like, let's see, this was posted um, one year ago. So, like, his black hair definitely is turning a little gray or whatever, just to kind of give you a sense of where we are. This isn't, like, the height of shingy. I think this is uh, kind of more modern. Uh, I, when, when would when would the height of shingy be, like, 2006, sort of? Is that where, like, it was, like... I mean, I thought he had a ponytail as of 30 okay, minutes good, ago. Okay, good so. call. Okay, so anyway, he's sitting on the couch with uh, somebody who's interviewing him, I think. I believe I've cut to the first answer that he gives. One, there's a lot of places and touch points where people can have these communication tools, and that's why PR should be at the time, yeah. front of the seat. Yeah. Period, full stop. It's yeah. very different to marketing, mm-hmm. but it should be within the marketing chamber. Mm-hmm. It's very mm-hmm. different. Mm-hmm. And that should be brand-led. Yeah. And then you call that the a marketing that is, chamber? You know, people are like, oh, the trajectory and growth of TikTok is incredible to watch. Yeah, it is, but it's mm-hmm. in niche space ideas right so if you want to learn how to cook it's really an interesting place we want right. to know about niche fashion it's inter- niche right. music super bloody niche and we used to call that the long tail totally so niche is the new mass particularly I... in that category because it's- i don't know if that really works as audio but i will say this david cross nailed his gesticulations that is amazing <laughs> that's almost where the joke is i don't think i realized that before i don't think that the 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 patter is as crossian as i was hoping I've been sort of reassessing my relationship with David Cross's stand-up because mm. um, it's been popping up. Speaking of niche being the new mass, it's been popping up on my TikTok a lot. And um, I, he, do you ever see this or do you ever hear someone on Kixie, Andrew? And uh, I'm trying to make this <laughs> yeah, relatable to your interest. That, yeah. um, <laughs> you ever see someone doing stand-up? This must be the experience, by the way, of the TBTL listener often, which is, we say something and they have a totally different experience and they want to just like immediately call in or email us and be like, what do you, there is an explanation for that. Or no, you're mm-hmm. totally wrong about that. David Cross has a bit about a Tumi luggage store that's in the airport, mm-hmm. which is kind of a funny premise, like, because you're already through security. Like, why would there be a luggage store in the airport when you're already, you know, about to get on your flight? Like, presumably you, you used luggage to get there. But I have been to multiple Toomey stores in airports because that's the kind of luggage that I have historically used. And they'll fix it for free if you have like a zipper that falls off or whatever. Like, I, you know, maybe I'll, I would, I don't think I've ever bought something, but I could see myself buying like a upgraded, you know, computer bag there or something just like in the airport, like you're in, you're in the state of mind of luggage. And so it's a it's a funny premise, but I've actually my lived experience has been uh, has countered the premise of his joke. That being said, I have seen some stand up from him that I thought was pretty funny because I'd always thought he's such a funny comic performer. He's such an interesting, smart guy. I never liked his comedy very much because it just felt very like George H. George W. Bush is a war criminal. Yeah, well, it's changed. I was going to say that because I was wondering if that's what you were going with this. Like Genevieve and I have obviously been big fans of his and specifically kind of through Mr. Show, but generally speaking, big fans of his um, for a long time. And we were on a road trip. I mean, early in our relationship, like, I mean, early enough that we were going on a road trip to like the Midwest from the East Coast or something. And we went to a probably Barnes and Noble to buy audio 
uh, CDs, like audio CDs, but like like stand up and and other like kinds of audio <laughs> entertainment. Like we didn't uh-huh. just dial it up on our phones, and we bought and I'll swear here because that's the name of the album. We bought his album that came out like at the height of the Bush administration, which was called "Shut Up, You Big Fucking Baby." And Oof. even then, we were just like, it was so angry. Not that there wasn't, that, and there's a lot of reason to be angry, but like it was just like whatever it was, sixty minutes of just like such angry stand up that you agree with. It's sort of how I describe like Twitter before I kind of kind of did kind of a, a purge of the people I was following years ago. Whereas like, yes, I agree with all of the outrage I'm reading here, but it's not making my experience good. I don't need to just be in another in a you don't always need to be in a room with a bunch of people who agree with you who are all just like scared and angry and yelling all mm-hmm. the time. And so that was definitely We call that three weeks ago. <laughs> right. Exactly. So I mean, hey listen, we all need those at times, but it can also yeah. be a bit much, right? And so, um, anyway, point is, Veeves and I also, I, I think I saw, I don't remember the details of it, but I think I even saw that luggage bit live because David was, like, touring three years ago. I, I don't know how it fits into the pandemic timeline, but I know Veeves and I saw him live in Seattle somewhat I- recently, I believe, and uh, and the tone had really shifted a, a great deal. It was more, like, kind of personal experience, and I found him to be a bit more uh, charming. Right. Like he's a, you know, he's a parent. I think Mm -hmm. he's actually been a dad for a decent amount of time now, but I feel like that's some of the material that he does now. He's, you know, doing airport material. He's bringing it, he's meeting me where I am as a, as a comedy fan, which is in the most obvious of places. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, boy, I don't, there's no need for me to get it. Mm, There's no need for me. Do it. Do it. Embrace your fear. Mm, I really don't trust think your I dark do side. So, of course, uh, Tuesday, just a couple of days ago, was election day, primary day. Um, and I feel pretty strongly about things that are going on here in uh, local politics in Seattle. I have a lot of opinions that I am I can not get into right now. But uh, th- let's just say that I uh, when I talk about the city council, notice I don't call it the uh, CC because CC is a nickname and the city council <laughs> is uh, no, no friend, friend of, of mine. Yours. Speaking of David. David Cross bits, but um, I uh, I follow on Instagram the Stranger. They put out you know the Seattle's alt Which weekly. Just- was sold, right? Yeah, it was, but to I, I'm hopeful for the future of it. I'm blanking on the fella's name, but he started a media company. He's a he's a former Seattle, I believe, kind of Democratic politician who started Grist, I believe, or at least started the company oh. that started Grist, and now that media company. I don't know what the deal with Grist is anymore, if it's even around anymore. But I believe that, that was a, that like a, that kind of focus on environmental journalism. That's my understanding. I wasn't a P one of that, but that's my understanding of what it was. But um, anyway, I. I follow this. I, it's very rare that I kind of comment or engage too much on Instagram. And I, I don't know what it was, but I, I went to cast my ballot and I had some strong feelings uh, contained inside that ballot as I went to drop it off at the uh, North Seattle College of ballot drop box where I always drop off my ballot. And as I dropped, you know, I pulled it in the parking lot and I was dropping it off. And I do that. You know, I've done that every election cycle. And maybe sometimes you see one other person dropping something off. But it seemed like it was really busy this Tuesday, which I was very surprised about. As everybody, you know, it's an off year primary. Like, it's just like Mm -hmm. there were you know the the free for all yeah and the people who were coming out like who were gonna like run for governor like it was like 50 did you get your semi bird uh vote yeah i was able to i was able to get my (laughs) throw in my vote for semi bird um no i went full bird actually um but anyway it was just kind of like a lot of the races were going to be foregone conclusions a lot of the other races people aren't going to be paying a lot of attention to right it was supposed to be very very Mm -hmm. low turnout i think they're expecting like 40 percent turnout or something i don't know what it ended up being but i was sort of chuffed uh as as we say to see that like it was really busy like there were all these cars like kind of pulling in um it just seemed like the ballot box just and again this is just where you drop off your ballot was super busy and um later that day i was just sort of like mindlessly scrolling through instagram and uh i saw that the stranger had uh, posted something about hey you still have time to vote you know turn in those ballots by 8 p.m 
And I posted something, which I almost want, like, I don't even know why I did this. This is so weird. This is so unlike me to post something like this. I just wrote, I wrote in the comments. Nobody had commented on this at all, and it had been posted for, like, I don't know, several hours. And I just posted, posted, I can report that the ballot box at North Seattle College was busier than I've ever seen it today, and I voted behind a bearded neighbor wearing a skirt, sporting a Black Lives Matter bumper sticker on their car, and I'm feeling optimistic. <laughs> so that's what I just <laughs> shared with the stranger. And so it was a positive message, though. Yeah, it was a I mean positive message. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. I thought this story was going to end with you were like somehow acting out in the comment section. You were just being like, let's go. No, what here's where I'm going to get in trouble is what I'm going to say next. Yeah, because you seem very hesitant to get into this. And what I you am. just told me didn't seem like something you should be hesitant about. And I, um, and then I. I, I posted that. I don't know if it's fair to say I forgot about it. I kind of forgot about it. Nobody reacted. Or and then yesterday I noticed. So this is like t- a day later or whatever. I noticed some one person hearted my comment, right? And mm-hmm. I'm like, oh. And so I clicked on it to see who it was. I don't, I don't know who it was. Not anybody I know. Um, but then I noticed that there are two more comments posted since then, okay? And one of them says, no ceasefire, no vote. I thought the stranger had more ethics. And somebody else said, way too many people on this list support an ongoing genocide. You'd think that that would disqualify someone. And so people going after the stranger for mm-hmm. encouraging people to vote in local elections yeah. gets the result of people saying, how dare you expect me to vote for a state lands commissioner when there's an ongoing genocide. I am not saying that to, I hope I don't even need to say this. I'm not saying that to undercut the sentiment there and that what's going Uh on is beyond atrocity. And the fact that it's still going on is beyond atrocity. And we need to have conversations about it. I don't think I'm the one to have the conversation on about that on this microphone, but you know, I think people would hopefully know where I stand on that. Having said that, I don't think that encouraging people not to vote in local citywide and state elections is the right way to try to send a message about an international issue like an ongoing genocide like if anything like do do your part like there was something about that I don't see how that in any way achieves the goal that you're going and for. I thought the stranger had ethics encouraging people to vote in local elections and anyway maybe it's, it's because that person I feel saw so that as unethical and I just and I, I look at what's going on in our city and I see a lot of things that I consider unethical and I'm like I'm going to the ballot box and also by the yeah. way I was really excited to see that some of these things that I was voting on and some of these people I was voting let's just say against <laughs> we're, we're kind of like coming out my way and I'm very locally speaking I'm, I'm I am even more optimistic now than when I posted to that about what's going to happen here in the general election. Um, and again, I, I kind of don't want to get into that because for most of our listeners, it's boring and, and, and whatever. But and again, I don't think I'm the most articulate on these matters. But anyway, just seeing people just being like, I thought the stranger had ethics. How dare you encourage people to vote in these local elections when people haven't spoken out on the on a ceasefire plan it seemed to be missing the mark for me and actually kind of de- it kind of bummed me out, to be honest with you. I, I, I share your read on that situation. I mean, obviously what I would say is that's one no- noisy person. I think I have that in my mind because the company that acquired the stranger and the Mercury is called Noisy Creek. Oh yeah, have you been doing? A and it's Googling? Brady Walkinshaw mm-hmm. yeah. is the state lawmaker who bought it. I was, uh, I was just going to say that's that's a person who I think is dealing with other stuff, and mm-hmm. for some reason the outlet that they're using or the way that they're trying to express, I think other things going on for them emotionally is to neg people who are encouraging people to vote, <laughs> which seems more about them than about uh, trying to get to a solution in Palestine. Um, also, I was just kind of surprised, I guess pleasantly surprised, and I'm, this sounds like a, such a like an insult, but I don't mean it to be. I was ple- Sorry, I'm trying to Mulaney right through that. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. Yeah. I'm trying to just keep it going. Um, I was surprised literally to find that the stranger, somebody thought there was economic value to the stranger. Like, I'm surprised somebody bought the stranger. And I say this as a person who loved that newspaper and I don't read it as much because I don't you know I don't watch the news because I'm a podcaster but like 
I'm just, I was sort of like, wow, someone paid money for The Stranger, so they think that there is a future for that, which I found encouraging. Yes, and it's not like some sort of a, a holding firm that is going right. to buy the name and then the people the that bought room. the OG Deadspin, right, right, exactly, or the or the LA um, Weekly, which is just like a really uh-huh. tragic story as well. And it, there's still something called um, the the LA Weekly, but it's just like it's it's just not what it used to be. They just gutted the, they just bought the brand basically, and and, and they're like the end enemy of journalism essentially the people who who bought and gutted publications like that whereas the stranger and again we'll we'll see where things go but like they already hired and I'm trying to remember um where she comes from but they apparently like brought in a, a like a legit new editor who's going to be like I, I think a, the the editor at large um and uh, and I think they brought her they're bringing her in um from a, like a legit a publication that I'm blanking on right now I think she worked at Rolling Stone during you know I think I think it was Rolling Stone Although Rolling Stone itself is Hannah Murphy Winter. That's the one. Is it Rolling Stone? Uh, let's see. I, I think I'm, it's I'm Rolling Stone. Clicking through this. Okay, I'm yeah. a little so, bit all I mean, over that's... the place. But um, but anyway, they seem to say like our plan is to put more money into journalism. I don't understand how that's an economic mm-hmm. model that's going to work for them. But I will definitely like honestly if. I don't think they would ever be anything but a free paper. But whatever the economic model is, if if they're true to their word about like expanding and, and bringing the stranger maybe back to some of its more um, journalistic heights, um, mm-hmm. and you know, kind of you know, shining a light on things, I, the stranger did some good work. It did some hilarious work. It did some very yeah. entertaining work. But it did some really good work a, as well. Um, I would definitely support this. I don't know if they would do something like a fundraiser. I don't know if it's the they hold events, you know, to raise money. I don't know what the economic model is, but as somebody who lives here and cares about this stuff, I will certainly do my best to support it. Yeah, I mean, I I would read a local paper that had some insightful commentary about the news and had I saw you, which, you know, uh, nobody saw me anymore. Nobody's seeing me. That that ship has sailed. But man, that was a big draw for me back in the day. Hoping They've been that doing that had... again lately. By the way, they do like they put that on Insta. I love it. They'll do a roundup Ooh, smart. of I saw yous. Yeah, they're yeah. Great. yeah, yeah. I would totally support that. I mean, it's it's weird. It feels like there is this. There's this kind of, I don't know what the analogy is, but like it's it's this kind of bridge that is hard to build. But if you built it, it seems like there would be people that want to go on the journey with you. Again, this analogy is really all over the place. The idea is if you talk to people about like, hey, a local thing in Seattle that's funny and interesting and telling me things I didn't know and connecting me with people who have kind of similar interests and maybe want to go on a date with me, whatever, like that just seems like something that has value. Mm -hmm. But it's so hard to like deliver on that enough over time that enough people pick up the paper or go to the website or read it you know i mean there are a lot of things in the media these days that are on paper a sort of a good idea and yet they can never seem to survive long enough to get that you know to get enough people interacting with that content for it to be somehow profitable i mean it's amazing how sometimes tbtl even on a day where i feel like i am literally at my worst articulate wise which the fact that I said articulate wise, I think, proves my point. Um, it tends to have a theme because if we try to address this, we get really into shingy territory. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we're literally. <laughs> All talking I'm saying about, is niche is the new mask. <laughs> we're, we're literally talking about like everything you say, I agree with, and then if you want to kind of follow that line of thought, you also have to say also in this day and age where what people the expectations of what we pay for has changed so much. You know, like mm-hmm. I was at lunch yesterday, and I, re- I I don't know if I was actually I wanted to ask you about this if you had taken sort of a similar journey. Do you still pay? Pay for the New Yorker. You you have a New Yorker subscription, yeah. right? I believe I Genevieve has a digital a digital only New Yorker subscription, um, but they have it locked down so much that I can't get into it. Like if I see an art, like Genevieve and I both have our own logins to the New York Times, and the New York Times. No, we're a family. We pay. We each have our own login. I don't know if you can set that up for the New Yorker, but essentially, if I try to click on a New Yorker article and I don't have any more free ones left, it'll say, "Okay, we're going to send a a number to your phone so you can log." Again, I'm, but my phone is Genevieve's phone, and she's at work right now. Like, I just want to read this thing. So yesterday, I was so carefully reading that um, 
profile that I knew was coming out about RFK Jr. I don't know if you had caught any wind the of that. The dead bear profile? Yeah, he got out ahead of the dead bear story because this profile was With coming Roseanne out. With Roseanne Barr. Right, like exactly. You do. <laughs> and so, and, and I was like, I was reading about the dead bear story, and then I was like, what? why is he volunteering this? And then I saw, like, oh, and he's, you know, this is an article I read last week. It said he's getting ahead of, uh, he realized it was all going to come out in this, what they called an expose in the New Yorker. And I was like, okay, I got to save my free, <laughs> my, mm-hmm. my free article for that. So yesterday, as I was eating a bowl of, uh, of, of wonton pho in the U district, Yum. I was like <laughs> carefully like reading it, but being careful not to click out of it because it was my last free article. <laughs> if I click out of it or try to get to it through another app, then it all, I'll have to stop reading it. So anyway, all of that is to say like w- the expectations, like I, this place where I was eating soup yesterday, reading this article, was like a block away from that bulldog newsstand, one of the last places in Ooh, Seattle. Oh, they're still slash, the bulldog is still there. Yes, they've reopened post pandemic oh, and they're offering it. magazines again. For a while, they went to being just a, a a coffee shop, but now they're a magazine shop again. Which again, you want to talk about like how does that work, right? And I almost went in just to buy the latest New Yorker, like so that I could continue reading this article at home because <laughs> I knew it was going to block me out. But anyway, all of that is to say the way we dance around these paywalls which you and I are guilty of in various ways or in this case not guilty of because we pay as a family but having to navigate it like and then you have the stranger which has always been free but got it's got its money through you know like it's it's connection to like advertising you know shows and other various nightlife events and what have you but all of that shit has just changed so much Mm -hmm. I don't understand how in 2024 you come in add money to that newsroom or spend money on that newsroom and then re coop it on a free weekly i just don't i don't get it but i'm real i mean i i hope it's for the best yeah me too i wish them success i think the world is a better place with stuff like that happening the world is a worse place andrew if you're gonna go i might even be today on the rfk jr celebrity <laughs> cruise does that get mentioned in the profile <laughs> Uh, if so, I haven't gotten to that part yet. I'm maybe about halfway I through. I haven't gotten to the, the article, although I'm very excited. You know what I'm excited to do? Listen to it through my New York Times oh, audio yeah. app you while that, yeah. I stroll around San Francisco, California. Um, I just, I don't know where I caught this, but like, uh, it was somebody talking about, and I don't know who this, I didn't really have, this guy wasn't really on my radar, but there's an actor named Zachary Levi, and he played like Shazam. He played Chuck. Remember that TV show called Chuck? Oh, I remember the I remember the name of it. Yeah, I didn't watch it. About I didn't either. I think it was he was a like special agent, but uh, relatable. I don't know what Chuck meant, but anyway, he then was Shazam in those yeah. movies that were like a Marvel movie. But I guess my guess is there was kind of it was sort of a Marvel comedy of sorts. I think DC, by the way, I could be DC, wrong, but okay. I feel like Shazam was sort of an answer to Deadpool. But I'm okay. probably getting okay. us in more trouble by saying that. <laughs> Not a topic though that people have strong feelings about no, at exactly. all. Exactly. Anyway, I somehow was I was reading something about the kind of like career downfall of this Zachary Levi guy who was you know kind of a pretty big movie star, and I think he just put out some movie called like Harold and the Harold and the Purple Crayon or something that was. Not it didn't do well at the box office. So anyway, it's like and now he's one of the celebrities on the RFK Jr. and Cheryl Hines tour. And it's also just like, really, Cheryl, like, Mm -hmm. I know you're married to the dude, but like what 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 kind of mind pilling happened to you? But anyway, the I, I then went down the rabbit hole of figuring out who are the celebrities on the RFK Jr. and Cheryl Hines fundraiser cruise like off of Long Beach or whatever mm. and it is Drea Di Matteo aka Adriana from the Sopranos oh. boo mm. Meta World Peace aka <laughs> Rod Arte- Ron Artest who I kind of love actually and I'm really bummed that he's you know th- this is something that appeals to him and then a- an influencer I hadn't heard of and then the guy who was played Shazam but <laughs> I was I like was sitting waiting to get my hair great clipped at the Fred Meyer in Longview Washington and I was like screen capping the poster for this and sending it to Becca just being like these are all people these are all entertainers who are now on our no fly list yeah well here's here's uh, here were two things that stood out to me in the article now that you say that it w- dazzling details one of which I should have known but didn't which was was um, when he was running as a because he started off running on the Democratic ticket or had intentions to do that or something. And did you know that Kucinich was his campaign? Dennis Kucinich was his campaign what? manager. See, I guess no, I, sh- I feel like I should have known because I yeah. liked Kucinich. Me too, big time. I'm from <laughs> Cleveland. 
Like, yeah. I, 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 that, that I met really Chris Sinich a couple of times when he me was too. having his moment with he, his tall wife. Yeah, yes, yes. I mean, every wife looks tall compared to Dennis yeah, Kucinich, you know, that's but okay. True. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that really bummed me out. But then apparently when he decided to run as an independent, um, Kucinich uh, parted ways. And the other thing was, because I've always wondered about the Cheryl Hines of it all. You know, like, mm-hmm. again, I, own, I don't, it's not like I'm somebody who, like, knows anything about Cheryl Hines' personal life. I just liked her performance on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah. And because that show is so like sort of cinema verite and, and sort of like an extension of Larry David's real personality, it, it's and, and and his life events. It's really hard for me sometimes to remember that they're not really married. You know what I mean? And that mm-hmm. Cheryl Hines yeah. is really not the character that she plays on that show. But I'm always like, damn, dog, like you're you're married to yeah. this guy. And then there was one line in there that said when he was, and I I don't know if I fully remembered this or maybe I blocked it out, but when RFK Jr. was apparently like, maybe before he was fully running, but you know, speaking out about the um, the vaccinations during mm-hmm. pa- the pandemic and drawing comparisons to the Third Reich. Uh, mm-hmm. Apparently, as he was making those comments, That's the and they Third were, Reich of politics, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> It's not show a show title. title. No, <laughs> I'll do the third Reich of politics. I'll do poopy butt poopy pants or whatever you <laughs> over that. But uh, anyway, um, uh, he said that he came home and and told her maybe we should get a separation for a while so all of this doesn't come down on you. But hmm. as of where, but that's all. There's like one sentence or half a sentence about that and I don't know if they pick up that thread again but it never explains what happened did they separate temporarily or not like how does she feel about this stuff and again it's not a profile on her so maybe that Mm -hmm. explains it but it did for a second I was like wait what like you had the sort of like you you had the sort of ability to sort of like read the tea leaves and say or read the room maybe and say like hey maybe this isn't good for you my wife maybe you don't want this smoke but uh, I don't know what Mm -hmm. ended up happening with that she clearly uh, embraced uh, the smoke. I read a New York Times profile of him about him and the pets. He's got a lot of animals. He's really into feeding these crows. And it mentioned basically, like, I think he had an ostrich that really hated. Cher- Is it Hind or Heinz? I I was saying Heinz. I thought it was Cheryl Heinz, right? Um, apparently he had an ostrich that was constantly menacing Cheryl Heinz early in their relationship, like, and attacking her. And then I think he got rid of it. Which, again, red flag. If your bow, if your boo is both anti-vax and has an ostrich that's trying to oh, kill you, okay. m- move yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, okay, yes, yeah. I wasn't sure what you meant the red flag. I was like, I think I thought you meant like that as a red flag of share. I don't know. I got confused for a second. No, I, I like, mean, she's putting hey, up with a lot I in this relationship. Say, if your ostrich doesn't like your girlfriend, get yourself a new girlfriend. Like, no, ostriches yeah. probably hate everybody. They do, but I just feel like you know this guy's got a lot of yeah. this guy's got a lot of wacky theories, yeah. and he has a he has a, a a wild animal that lives with him that's trying to hurt you. You got options, Cheryl. Yeah, blink twice <laughs> if you need us to come in and save you. He's an unvaccinated ostrich. <laughs> There's a right way to rock and a wrong way to roll. You can just listen to your soul. Just remember that life. Is number one. You can be having so much fun. Just remember that the life is much fun. You can be number one. Last week we were practically collapsing under the weight of so yes. many blurs days. Today it's a little bit more mm-hmm. manageable, but we have a good. I feel like I say moment. ostrich. Ostrich. Incorrectly, I've always said ostrich, like oh, it ends yeah. in a G, and it doesn't. It's an ostrich, right? Yeah, that is how it's spelled, ostrich. I heard somebody like professionally saying milk the other day, which is something Ooh. I, I think I grew you up must saying. Must felt very seen. Yeah, because you do. I slip into that. I thought I'd retrained. Uh, growing up, we always said milk until like Genevieve. I started dating Genevieve. She said, "Are you saying milk or milk?" It's spelled <laughs> with an I, and I thought I had. I thought I had Mall corrected cart? myself on that, but yeah, I mean, some people are still calling. I think you've got. Milk Milk dialed in, but I think the name Hal and the word pal are still, that's, you're growing it. Yeah, maybe, because I don't even, I wouldn't even know. Once you tell me that that's an I, not an E, I know how to correct it. I can hear and see milk versus milk, but Hal is like, how, how else do you say it? H-A-L. Hal. Hall? 
Hool? 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 Is it Hool? <laughs> I'd like all of those <laughs> as options. Oh, coincidentally, our first um, <laughs> blurs I hear is from Hool in Broad. No, oh, perfect. Uh, it's Phil in Broadview says, "Happy birthday to my partner Sarah." From swim practice to baseball to scouts to summer, thanks for keeping it all crispy with us boys and for growing a little Aww. older with me. I sure do love the bejesus out of you. Love Phil. Aww. That is adorable. I was having parental thoughts the other day when I was mm. eating some dinner in PDX and I was watching the Little League World Series. I don't know if I'm like, you know, I've got a 30 year old child, I'm not young. I don't know if I see more children in my future, but I would really dig having a kid who played in the Little League World Series. But the problem is I would have to give them a name like either Maverick or Doozy because the team from St. George, Utah has a kid named Maverick and a kid named Doozy on it. And those are those are given names, not Those like are given a, Christian names. You know why? Because I Googled the team, and there was a story in the St. George, Utah newspaper about how the team is doing. Hmm. And they were, I mean, the names are just wild. White kid names, white kids who play high-level baseball in 2024. It is a, it is an adventure out there. I'm not even remembering some of the craziest ones, but I know one was named Maverick. The coach's kid is named Maverick. And then I looked it up because there was a kid named like Doozy Brinson or something. I, kinda, <laughs> I, like, I think I'm kind of liking Doozy. You know, I, I like it better than Maverick. Yeah. Maverick, is that that just seems like you're, I mean, you name a kid Maverick. I mean, you, you are, that kid honestly, do you give gun. the kid a lifted truck as their yeah. second birthday present? Like, what do you get for the Maverick who has everything? I mean, yeah. Um, Culturally speaking, though, that, I mean... You gotta separate the names from that. It's like everybody. I feel like any kid who goes to the, whatever their name is, any kid who's at that level of baseball at that age, the, there's probably lifted trucks involved, right? Right, and that's why we sponsor the TBTL Junior Sluggers, exactly. who have. I've been to their games. I got eyes on it. Zero lifted truck energy <laughs> yeah, right. for the Junior Sluggers, and that's why we love that team. Nice. <laughs> Rachel in Amsterdam says, happy Blursy to Ivan. Hey, this is these are our pals, Rachel and Ivan. Another trip them. around the sun, another thousand hours of TBTL to bring us oh. inordinate amount of joy. Inordinate amounts of joy. Better not be ordinance. No, sorry about <laughs> that. A whole other situation. Sorry, Rachel's a... A woman of words, too. How embarrassing. She for sure me. is. Uh, Published author, uh, Rachel, journalist, Rachel I've says, been appreciator. Uh, as we all are. I love spending birthdays with you no matter where we are on this blue marble. This week we're in L.A. And while we didn't have a, an inn at the Magic Castle, this is oh. your golden blurs day. And that might just be the most magical thing of all. I love that for them. Also, yeah. don't, do you have an inn at the Magic Castle? Does Veeves? I know you all. Yeah. You spend a lot of time there. The inn at the Magic Castle is you um, get a hotel room at the Magic Castle Hotel for one mm. night, and that gives you um, a, access to the actual Magic Castle for one night. So I cool. saw some little like digital. Digital? <laughs> no, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. I'm saying digital. Digital. Totally different. Digital. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I saw like some kind of online trailer. I couldn't tell if it was just an ad for the Magic Castle or if it was indicating a reality show about young magicians. But I thought I would watch that reality show competition, like a, a, a reality competition show about young magicians trying to make it at the Magic Castle. I would watch that. Even if it weren't at the Magic Castle, that is so interesting that nobody's tried that yet. Isn't that a good idea? It just seems like such an, yeah, especially, I mean, I would say that the, not that there aren't plenty of competition style shows and reality style shows out there. I don't really pay much attention to them, but I feel like it's at least crested. It's at least peaked, right? Like I feel like yeah. 10 years ago, it was just like every day there was a new, some sort of reality show that I would see advertised during football games or whatever. I sort mm -hmm. of feel like we've, we've at least plateaued on that, right? Yes, I think we've our 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 hunger for that is somewhat sated, mm -hmm, yeah. generally speaking. But but yeah, I saw these young people doing these magic tricks, and that was the format was. I don't know if you're familiar with this. It's already now. Speaking of things that have sort of crested, the format is like saying, "I'm a podcaster. Of course, I bring a road mic with me. I'm a podcaster. I'm. A, have you seen this online? Like, I'm a I'm a I'm a cat mom. Of course, I'm going to have hair all over my pants. No, I'm I don't a cat think mom. I'm familiar. A, Oh, so that was a thing that was going around the internet a bunch, was like, I'm a fill-in-the-blank. And then you kind of make statements about 
the characteristics of the person of whatever you've just described, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I'm a Lyft driver. Of course I'm going to tell you to put the seatbelt on before we drive away. Mm -hmm. I'm a Lyft driver. Of course I'm going to have a laminated card that says tips appreciated that hangs off of the back of the passenger seat. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that that was the format that these magicians, they were like, I'm a young magician. Of course I'm going to... I'm going to mechanic a deck of cards, which is the term for when you make the cards go in the order you want them to. I'm a magician. Of course I'm going to. And so I couldn't quite tell if it was just some meme thing that the Magic Castle was trying to do or if it was actually indicating a program. But I'm whoever runs the Magic Castle, I'm here for it. If you guys do that show, I will watch it. Yeah, is it still, um, wasn't it Doogie Howser for a while? The Magic Castle also had its share of scandals. Neil Patrick Harris? Neil Patrick Harris, I think, was the, the head of the Magic Castle there for a little bit, or at least, like, the president and a client. I'm not exactly also sure. Also a client. Yeah, also a client. Nancy says, I want to wish myself a happy 70th Blur's Day. Hey. Heck yes, Nancy. Happy Blur's Day, Nancy. Maybe this year I'll figure out what I want to do with my life. It feels very strange to have such a big number attached to me. I'm sure she won't hear this, but I also want to wish my sister-in-law, Laura, a very happy Blur's Day. We were both born on August 27th, a few years apart. She's a wonderful person, and I'm grateful that she's in my life. Hey. Be the change you want to see and make Laura listen to this. That's right. That's right. Be the change we want to see. Download. Also, if you have any spare change, we can, Absolutely. we can get us out of a couple of jams. Don't give it to the stranger. <laughs> I just realized that it says 827. I wasn't sure if I was supposed to hold on to that one, but I will uh, use this opportunity to tell people, please, if you want to submit a Blur's Day message, email it to me, andrew at tbtl.net, and you must put Blur's Day in the subject line. Otherwise, I will not see it. Um, and also send it in on the week that you want it read. Sorry, Nancy, if I kind of got ahead of myself on this one. Corbin says, happy Blur's Day to my dear friend Toby. I consider myself so lucky to have your love, support, and laughter over all these years. I don't know how many folks appreciate Le Miserable and Weird Al like you and I do. Nice pronunciation, by the way. Thank you. Weird Al, right? Weird, all weird you have to think, Al? Yes. Yes, yeah. good. No, you. Ironically, you do say that kind of funky. <laughs> but you say lame, you said lame is a rock. Weird, weird, weird. <laughs> uh, but that is one of the tens of reasons we are lifelong buds. Party hard. Hey, happy Blur's Day, Toby. Brian says, happy Blur's Day to my fellow Tennessee 10 Molly. It's only a matter of time before our paths cross. And when they do, B-Day drinks on me. Hope you have a great one. I didn't realize you meant like birthday. I thought that was just a really interesting construction of a sentence. Drinks, um, B-Day drinks on me. B -day like it was drink. Cajun or something. Oh, B-Day. B-Day. B-Day food, B-Day drinks on me. <laughs> oh, I see. I, I didn't follow that. That was like B-E-D-A-Y drinks. B-Day drinks? <laughs> they be I guarantee you they're on me. <laughs> it's the economy, stupid. Zach says, I want to wish a happy Blur's Day to my 11 and former 10 back when she listened to podcasts. Lauren. Oh, so mm. Wait, what, hmm. are we trying we lost to get one, a, Andrew. Were we trying to get another Lauren um, to listen earlier? Uh, no, that was Laura. Nancy was uh, talking to Laura. This is for Lauren. Uh, Lauren says, thanks so much for crushing it through this wildly rough year. I literally couldn't make it without you. To paraphrase hmm. the Mountain Goats, we're going to make it through this <laughs> year if it kills us. Happiest of Blur's Days to you, my sweet. Huh. Familiar listener named Hannah. Hannah okay. says, "Can you wish Maddie a happy Blur's Day? She's 18 today." I, I I refuse to accept that information as being factually based. We are nine hours ahead in Italy, but I will make hmm. sure she listens to the episode on Aww. Sunday when we're flying back to London. Thanks, love you, big brother. Love Hannah. I love both of you. My niece Maddie, who is just one of the most talented, smartest, sweetest people out there, is I'm sorry, Maddie, I have bad news for you, not allowed to be 18. Mm -hmm. That's um, under pre under the Harris Waltz regime. Ooh. By the way, I, I was really I going you on around. The wrong, I sent you on the wrong track on that, didn't I? It's, is it Waltz? It's walls, right? Oh, it's right? walls. It's walls. It is, it's walls. and I think I'm the one who put that poison To the window, to the walls. I heard it on the news like the next day or something. I was like, oh my God, why did I do this to Luke? I confused The everything. only reason that I, I didn't, I, I'm usually very embarrassed of myself in those things, but I was watching Jamel Bowie 
put out a video right afterwards, and he didn't know how to say the name. He's like, I gotta learn that. And I was oh, like, okay. okay. But it is if walls, I'm sharing right? this with Jamel, it's walls. Okay. I believe it's walls. Under the Harris Walls regime, it will be illegal for my beautiful, talented niece to turn 18. Can so, I put a spin on that, news. though? Here's the deal. Once you're 18, you get your own bank account. You start supporting the podcasts that you love and rely on. <laughs> like, I'm just saying. Maddie, do not. <laughs> this, is, this is an absolute no from, from your <laughs> uncle. By the way, I've been thinking about getting... This tells you where in America I live. I've been thinking about getting a yard sign, oh. which is such a low... Which is such a, a low level of commitment. And also, I mean, I'm also planning to do some phone banking legit, but... Like, I had to go through, like, I had to do a quick accounting of my neighbors and the vibe. Like, I live in an area where it is potential, it's potentially the case that having a yard sign supporting Vice President Harris and Tim Walls could bring you, could, could put you in for some amount of, like, you know, I don't know. I don't know what. But then I thought, if I can't put a GD yard sign out and, and, and stand behind that or stand by that as a thing. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I don't want to live there, so I'm getting a yard sign. But I think I might see if I can hire Walt to make it. Oh, that, oh man, a custom. And I'm thinking about it being camo. Yeah, it'd be funny. Yeah. Like those hats. Hey, did you read that Like piece? those hats. Yeah, I was, I'm good. considering buying one of those hats, that's but I don't want to get assaulted in the Home Depot. Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually, I really like that. Um, who is it? Uh, it who, who is the, oh, it's um, Chappelle Roan, right? Those hats are kind of like, kind of a, uh, because oh. Chappelle Roan has Chapel those. Roan, or sorry, Chapel Roan. No, wait, is, Ch- is it Chappelle? It's Chapel. It's Chapel, it's Chapel Roan. Roan. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, but uh, I would love a character named Chappelle Roan. Why did I think who's Chappelle? just telling stories about playing basketball with Prince uh, while yeah, singing right. Hot to Go? Of course, it's Chapel Roan. <laughs> bringing together. I always think of uh, you first. I think I've told you this because you played that as music for a weekend. I can't remember if it was yours or a listener's, but you said like before I'd ever, and I think a lot of people had heard that name. You were like, I think this is going to be more than just a popular musician. This is going to be like a craze. And boy, were you right I, it's about the that. only thing I've ever been right about. Yeah. But I will tell you that every time I see like the footage of her at Lollapalooza, yeah, and this this oceans of people, I'm like. Well, put that in the win category for Luke's predictions. Um, yeah. Everything else is in the L category. And also, she played on um, the block party too. It actually caused that like, was, some real did concerns. You, yeah. Did you see any of the footage of the people at like the gas station and stuff? No, Just, no, like, not at the gas station. I saw like overhead footage of the of the craziness. But what did you see? It, it, oh, just basically. It was so sold out, uh, her show, uh, but, you know, obviously you can hear them for Capitol Hill Block Party. You can hear the music if you're not actually technically in the perimeter Mm -hmm. of the thing. And so, I mean, tens of thousands of people just came out to stand around on Capitol Hill, particularly at this. There was this huge scene at a gas station Mm. on Capitol Hill that's kind of adjacent to where the block party happens Mm -hmm. of everybody just singing Chapel Roan songs. It was like a, you know, it was some kind of it was a Beatle mania or something. Do you think they know that it's that that, of every like I stumbled so much today and somehow that's going to bother me more than anything. Um, But uh, anyway, I authorize you to cut it out. Um, I was going to ask you for your own safety. Um, yes. Do you live near? And I know you don't know all of your neighbors, but do you suspect that any of them might be Supreme Court justices? <laughs> Hold on, I'm doing a mental the, inventory of the flags. That's the only way you can get in trouble. Uh, you know, just uh, letting your uh, political yeah. beliefs known. I really did, though. Like, I went on this whole on my little jog this morning. I was well. I was listening to the Daily, a really good, by the way edition of the daily today they had a a reporter go out to a town in wisconsin that has been going very much for trump of late and they went out with a guy who's a democrat who's just kind of um door knocking to try to take a temperature read on what you know sort of voters in a swing state who in are in a district that's historically been going for trump what they think about the change in the ticket Mm -hmm. they didn't have the tim walls information yet which actually would have been kind of relevant because i think the whole point of him is that stuff but anyway, it was a very good episode, but it had me thinking about yard signs and just anyway, that topic. And, and the journey I went on was like, oh, I should get a yard sign. And then it was, is somebody going to like, I don't know, egg my house? And then I was like, no, my neighbors are actually pretty chill. I don't yeah. know what their politics are, but live. there's nobody, yeah. there's nobody. And I'm at the end of a kind of a dead end road. Like, and then I was like, I can't believe I'm a 48 year old man who was actually scared to put a yard mm-hmm. sign up. Mm-hmm. Like, what does that say about me and about the discourse? Mm-hmm. And then I and then I ended on, I'm going to call my dad and hire him to make me a huge-ass Harris Walt sign, and I might legit make it camo. Ooh, I like that. Also, you got to hang up those Teddy's letters, I think, that you... Um, yes. 
uh, grabbed from your dad. And I've got to put on my Teddy because it's time for me to go out and do another TV shoot. It's time for me to uh, give one more Blurs a shout out. This is from Katie. We just ran out of music a while ago. Katie says, I hope I'm not too late to wish Corinne a happy Blurs Day. Of course, Corinne, uh, our our pal down south, um, Corinne. Hot air balloon enthusiast. Exactly, indeed. Uh, But Katie also says, I just found out that she and I share the same Blurs Day. So happy Blurs Day to my fellow 10 and my Blurs Day twin. Happy Blurs Day to you too, Katie. Um, it says, I hope you had an amazing day. That's from Katie to Corinne and from us nice. to Corinne and Katie and everybody involved. Happy Blur's Day, everybody. Mm-hmm. Especially Maddie. Although, again, sorry, it doesn't count. You're going to be perpetually mm-hmm. 17 and a half mm-hmm. uh, as far as I am concerned. Maddie really roasted me in the Hawk Squad today, which well, yeah. hurt. Well, she's well her name is adult. spelled, the shortened that. version of her name is, is M A D I. And I typed it in, and it auto-corrected to a more conventional spelling of Maddie. And then I corrected it, and then she said, from, like, Europe, from across the Atlantic. She said, yeah, that was auto-correct and not just my uncle not knowing how to spell my name. Ooh, yikes. Salty birthday. So it begins. For Madeline. So it began. I mean, I, I can't tell. If Madeline. She, I, <laughs> the irony is that I mispronounced the full version of oh, her name. Oh, is that as true? Was, is it Madeline? It's Madeline. Madeline. Well, I would never make that mistake. Uh, it's Chappelle <laughs> Madeline. <laughs> right, exactly. All right, now you so can't I'm cut gonna, it out. I'm I, sorry. That no, was no, dirty. No, no, I'm going to, I'm probably just going to Nixon tapes this whole episode <laughs> where I'm just going to accidentally de- <laughs> lean on Love the delete it. button for big chunks. There's so much from today's show that I'm fine with you cutting out of me and so, me and I'm not feeling, I don't I'm know. in a silly goofy mood today. I don't know what to tell you. I know you All are right. fine. I like silly goofy. I don't, I don't like whatever I was putting out there, but anyway, tomorrow's going to be freaking amazing. It's going to be, we're going to end on such a strong note tomorrow with the oh, Friday show. Yeah. You're not even going to believe it. You're going to have so much. You're going to get tired of all the good pos- podcasting. You're going to say, sirs, please, we can't handle any more good podcasting. The show's going to be do so it. good, it's going to make you puke. <laughs> so tune in for that tomorrow. <laughs> in the meantime, have a great Thursday. Happy Blur's Day to everybody out there. And um, please remember, no mountain too tall. And good luck to all. Power out. <laughs> 